In this video, we're going to be discussing the trochanteric prominence angle test, or the TPAT, but for obvious reasons, it usually goes by its other name, Craig's test. To perform Craig's test, the patient's going to be positioned in prone, as you see right here, and whichever side you're testing, you're going to take that lower extremity and bend the knee to 90 degrees, as you see right here. The PT is then going to stabilize the patient's sacrum and firmly palpate the test side greater trochanter. Recall the greater trochanter is found on the lateral aspect of the femur, and you're going to want to palpate the most prominent aspect of that greater trochanter. And I usually recommend using the tips of your second and third digits and keep those fingers on the greater trochanter throughout the duration of the test. Now in just a minute, you're going to see me take the patient's hip through internal and external rotation. If there's any of those rotators that are tight, that may cause the patient's hip to rise up off the table, or there may be additional rotation there, and that will skew the results that we're going to take in just a minute with a goniometer. So in terms of stabilizing the patient's sacrum, I'm not going to be doing it here in this video, but that becomes more important if you do have that rocking of the hips as you go through internal and external rotation. In the end, I'm really going to have to have four points of contact. One hand's on the foot here to control the internal and external rotation. My other hand here in a minute is going to be on the greater trochanter. A third hand would have to be stabilizing the sacrum or the hip. And then a fourth hand is going to have to use the goniometer to take the measurement. So it's actually recommended if you're doing Craig's test to have somebody help you perform the test. That way one person can stabilize the sacrum and palpate the greater trochanter. The other person can go through rotation of the hip and measure with the goniometer. Okay. So right here I'm going to palpate the most prominent aspect of the greater trochanter. And what I'm going to be doing is taking the patient's hip through internal and external rotation. That's external rotation. And then through internal rotation. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm kind of going slowly through that range. And I'm feeling for where the greater trochanter sticks out at its most prominent point. And I would feel that with my second and third digits. So I'm just going to monitor where it becomes most prominent. And let's suppose it becomes most prominent right here. Now you'll notice here that the patient's right hip is in a position of internal rotation. Having some degree of internal rotation at the hip whenever the greater trochanter sort of pokes out the most, that's very common. It would be extremely uncommon if I felt the greater trochanter become most prominent in a position of external rotation. If that was the case, I'd probably want to go and uh, redo the test and get someone else to take a look at it as well because that would be extremely rare. And then, once I find the hip position where the greater trochanter becomes the most prominent and sticks out the most, I'm going to hold the lower leg in that position here, and I'm going to measure the angle that it makes with vertical. Let's talk about how that works. So if you look at the picture here, based on the position of the lower leg, we know that the hip is in internal rotation. That's going to be expected for the vast majority of results with Craig's test. And we're going to look at the angle that the lower leg here makes relative to vertical. And this angle right here, this is called the degree or angle of antiversion. Once you have this position locked in, you're going to get out a goniometer. The movement arm is going to be aligned along the front of the lower leg right here. It's really going to be on the shaft of the tibia and a line bisecting the medial and lateral malleoli. The stationary arm is a vertical line that bisects or is perpendicular to the table, and the axis down here of the goniometer is a point where the movement arm bisects the stationary arm line on the knee. Now just to preface what constitutes a normal versus an abnormal test, an x-ray is the gold standard for looking at this angle of antiversion. By no means is Craig's test ever going to be as accurate as that gold standard. But Craig's test can be used as a quick screen to determine whether or not someone might need an x-ray to look into this further for diagnosis. Now what constitutes a normal angle of antiversion? Well at birth the angle is approximately 30 degrees and depending on what source you're looking at you might see a slightly different value. But one thing you should note is that at birth that's when the antiversion angle is the greatest. As the person matures into an adult notice that that angle drops. So a normal amount of antiversion in adults is anywhere between 8 degrees and 
and 15 degrees. And note that it involves some amount of hip internal rotation. It's not the same as internal rotation, but it involves hip internal rotation. That being said, what constitutes an abnormal test? Well, you could have an abnormal test on either side of this normal range. So in adults, excessive antiversion would be having an angle greater than 15 degrees. And this is often associated with squinting patella and towing in during stance and walking. It could be unilateral or it could be bilateral. So that would be excessive antiversion. Now, if you have an angle less than eight degrees, and that could be seven, six, five, four, all the way down to neutral, and rarely into some degree of external rotation, that would actually be retroversion, so an angle less than eight degrees. This is associated with a towing out stance and towing out during gait. Also, more likely to have pes planus, impaired coordination, and balance issues, among other things. Now, Craig's test can certainly be done on adults. However, it's most useful when it's assessed in the pediatric population. And that's because if a child has some kind of innate deformity or abnormality of the hip and or femur, at that point, the bones are not yet mature. They haven't finished growing. And so there's a greater likelihood that if you apply some kind of corrective procedure, that it will have a beneficial effect later on in life. If you wait until adulthood, there's significantly fewer options that will have successful outcomes to correct for a bony abnormality since the bones have matured. Here's one more look at Craig's test. So we're going to take the test side and take the knee to 90 degrees. Firmly palpate the greater trochanter and find its most prominent aspect while the knee is at 90 degrees and neutral rotation. Then we're going to take the patient through external and internal rotation until we find the point at which the greater trochanter sticks out the most. There's external and here's internal rotation. And right here is where that greater trochanter sticks into my fingers the hardest. And that's where I know I need to measure the angle of antiversion. So I would get out a goniometer, hold this position, and take the angle of the lower leg relative to vertical. And that is my angle of antiversion. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.